Sports for Real with Coach Hall. You know, in the midst of all this super conference craze, there is a group of schools and institutions that's being left out of the conversation. No, they're not the big Division I A schools, but they are big enough to generate a sufficient amount of revenue. And I'm talking about the HBCUs. Nobody's talking about the HBCUs forming these super conferences for revenue, but I'm bringing it back to the forefront. You know, it was about 25, 26 years ago, there was a group of HBCU officials from the SWAC and the MEAC who met about the possibility of forming a super conference to go Division I together. That would be a great move for the HBCUs because not only would you make the jump from 1AA at the time, you would be going to 1A and doing it as a group instead of as an individual. That would be beneficial to the whole group. Case in point, FAMU. They actually tried to go Division I when they weren't ready for it. Coach Joe had actually built up a pretty good team, in which I heard him recently say that is one that was the best team that he was ever going to have, and they had to implode that team because of the regulations concerning Division I. So when you had a good team that had a chance to challenge for the 1A, 1AA championship, have that destroyed just so you can go to Division I for prestige sake, that is not a good situation. And they found out the hard way when they had to go 1A. They didn't have the facilities to host any game, so they had to go on the road to do it. And they got themselves cracked on the head every time they stepped on the field. That is demoralizing for everybody. That's demoralizing for the coaches, the players, and definitely the fans. FAMU was a lone wolf. So much of a lone wolf they were when they were in the MEAC and they did their farewell tour that time, they were mistreated everywhere they went. So they found out what people really thought about them by trying to go and do things on their own. However, had they tried to do it as a group, they would have had more power. And by them being in the conference, you would have had a conference schedule, you'd have been able to travel, and the whole scenario would have been a lot different. So that is something that needs to be talked about right now. Again, back in the late 90s, mid to late 90s, the late Marino Chasm, you know, the, the calling the Godfather, he was a longtime uh, Alcorn State and Southern coach and athletic director. He was spearheading that with a, with a group of other people and it looked like they were going to put it together, but talks fell apart. And FAMU at the time was dominating the MEAC, and they felt like you know they can do better than what they were doing. The, the MEAC was not was not strong enough for them anymore. They wanted you know to taste higher class meals, and it didn't work out for them. They had to come back down to earth, and they suffered for it. But that was the time where everybody's talking about these. Uh, super conferences, the, the biggest of the HBCUs can form a conference. You already have some TV deals with ESPN, but if you had a bigger talk base or financial base, you know, for instance, Tyler Perry just purchased BET. That would be a perfect opportunity to showcase, showcase HBCU talent. So there are a lot of opportunities out there for HBCUs if that's something they want to pursue. Long shot, but it's something to think about. Sports for real.